Uh, I'm Kaushal Trivedi, Business Development Manager for Teleda and ISCO and uh, for the water platform products and water platform products includes uh, flow meters and sampler uh, product lines uh, where we make uh, uh, automatic samplers, uh, flow sensors, uh, electronics and remote communication devices as well as the software. So wastewater disease surveillance is basically you are trying to find the presence of virus or spread of infectious disease through wastewater analysis, community pool wastewater analysis. So you are trying to find out what is infection in a, at a community level. So it is basically an uh, additional tool to the clinical testing, but the benefit of WDS or wastewater based uh, disease surveillance is uh, you get five to seven days uh, uh, in advance this information. And why it is, I'll give you the example of a recent COVID-19 case. When person get infected, it will not show the symptoms for next two, three days. A uh, person might take a couple days to go to for the clinical testing. Accurate results coming from the clinical testing take another three days. So you, are lo you lost already six, seven days. Whereas the same person on the day one, it get, he, get in, he or she get infected, started shedding virus through, uh, through his or her stool and it end up in a wastewater. And on the day one, if it, the wastewater uh, that analysis is performed, you can find the presence of virus on a day one. And as such, this six to seven days doesn't sound big, but uh, it is very, very important uh, as we all know for the COVID-19 because during that six to seven days, unknowingly that person is moving in the community and spreading or make, uh, spreading the infection to the other people. So if we have a six to seven days in advance information, we can, our public health department can put good control, control measure uh, to control the infection. So WDS uh, is, uh, uh, there for a long, long time, and for an example, it was used uh, for the polio, detection of the polio. So it is, uh, it's, since then, it become in a limelight because of the COVID-19 uh, spread, and we all know in the last couple of years, and it's not just in the United States, but globally, uh, why it is a hot topic. Uh, it is a hot topic because, uh, uh, you know, WHO uh, reported in 2019 uh, top 10 uh, uh, health threat uh, to human being. And out of top 10, four are infectious disease. So it's a big, big chunk, uh, the four of them. And let's take last 20 years. In last 20 years, uh, how many big outbreaks were there? Uh, I will say Ebola and swine flu, Zika virus, now the COVID-19. And recently we are hearing about uh, monkeypox. So, uh, you know, what is the reason for that? It is because of its uh, uh, unprecedented uh, growth, uh, population growth, uh, urban population growth, uh, climate change, uh, and uh, accelerated growth of uh, antimicrobial resistance. And because of all these things, uh, infectious disease are the new pathogens, more and more new pathogens are uh, coming into limelight as well as uh, you know, reoccurrence of the previous pathogens which was controlled previously. So that is coming into limelight. For an example, in last 50 years or so, uh, roughly 1,500 new pathogens were detected by researchers. So it's a, that's why it's become a hot topic now. So WDS has a much bigger scope than just COVID-19. A uh, lot of, in last couple of years, a lot of uh, researchers have found that you, uh, WDS can help in finding presence as well as spread for many other infectious diseases, including common, common flu. So uh, that's definitely be beyond uh, just COVID-19. And not just infectious disease, some of the cities uh, like LA and uh, town of Cary in North Carolina, they are using or they have used WDS for, to find substance overdose. 
And so that's the reason it is much beyond uh, just a COVID. You can implement for many other reasons. So there are uh, three major steps. Uh, one is a field activity wherein you collect accurate source representative samples and transport it properly to the lab. Uh, once it then second activity is once the sample arrived in the lab, they are done proper analysis of that and then they are doing analytics on that. When I say analytics, they are trying to find the past trend as well as they predict the future trends, what's gonna happen kind of thing. So that's an analytics get implemented. And then that information, the third step and last is, it has to go into public health department so that they can take enough control measures or they can take proper actions to balance uh, economy uh, versus the, the spread. That's a, that's a good question. So there are currently, there are two methods. Uh, one is uh, manually, a uh, person will go and collect the sample using the deeper. Uh, uh, and second is automatic sampler. But when person goes uh, uh, and collect the sample manually, uh, that is basically, it involves human error. Somebody can collect the sample from top of the channel and another person can go from the same location from the bottom of the channel Board of the channel uh, samples will have more sediments which will mislead the results and uh, so it's a garbage in garbage out. Uh, and then second thing is uh, when you are doing manually uh, then you know it's wastewater may come in contact with uh, the human being which is unhygienic as well as unsafe. And the last thing is it's a resource requirement. How many uh, people we have to send it in the field so it's a resource requirement. So those are the limitations, so that's why manual grab sampling is not recommended practice uh, for WDS. Contrary to that, automatic sampler is most preferred method because there is no human intervention in collecting the, the sample. Samples can be collected on a time base or a flow base, so you leave the sample, sampler in the field and it, it will program it for the for the uh, you know application base and, and time base or the flow base, and uh, it is hygienic. You know that's another uh, area. It's it's very hygienic. And the never uh, human never come in contact with the wastewater. So I'll say um, at a very early stage, uh, I'll say quarter one, 2020, and what happens ironically that. Uh, we were working with uh, many labs and entities. Those were involved in doing wastewater analysis for the opioid overdose. So we are in discussion with them for the sampling po uh, portion of it. And when the, the COVID outbreak hit in 2020, all these labs changed their focus to the COVID-19 and right away all the sampling discussions uh, started for the COVID sampling. So we were involved at a very early stage, uh, Q1 2020. Good question, because that will depend on purpose and location. And purpose can be either you are trying to detect the presence of the virus. If you are in early stage of the outbreak, you are trying to find uh, just a presence. But if you are already in the uh, mid of the outbreak, everywhere is there's a, a hot spots, then you are trying to find the trend. So purpose can be to find uh, pre prevalence of the virus or the finding the trend. <clears throat> if you are in the uh, finding the trend, then I think uh, wastewater treatment plant influent is a good locations, whereas a uh, uh, lot of you know uh, wastewater is coming from different different neighborhoods and kind of stuff. So that's a good location. And there, uh, ISCO 5800 series permanent refrigerated sampler 6712FR or platinums are ideal uh, because it has a very good refrigerator, very powerful refrigerations built onto that. It is an AC powered, which is generally available at all the influent locations. So that's an ideal for uh, finding train uh, and, and uh, AC powered refrigerated sampler. And now you are trying to find, uh, to, to, to detect the presence of the virus, then you are trying to go to the source. It is better to go to the source. And when I say source, 
means either buildings or the neighborhood outlet. And as these sites are remote, it is advisable to use a portable sampler and ISCO makes wide range of portable sampler, GLS 3700 and 6712 portable. And in most of the cases, uh, time-based composite sampling is good enough. So GLS and 3700 are good recommended sampler for that. But in some cases, let's say for an example at a community outlet, uh, it is better to take flow-based sampling because uh, in the community, uh, people are using bathrooms and toilet. Uh, most of the people are using in the morning time. So it is better to take more samples during that time instead of in the afternoon where only few people are using. So in that case, you, you are trying to take flow-based sampling and that uh, 6712 is an ideal sampler because it has a built-in flow module uh, with the sampler. So that is a nice uh, uh, recommended for those location. Now the third purpose is basically uh, some cities have are trying to do uh, sampling for multiple locations. Let's say 40 nursing home in one city, I remember that. They wanted to do it, let's say at least 10 to 15 nursing home per day uh, do the sampling. Uh, for that, portable refrigerated sampler is going to make uh, Blizzard is an ideal. It has a multi-bottle, so uh, operator can assign one bottle for each location and uh, they can move from one location to another. It has a built-in refrigeration, so battery powered, uh, no need of any AC. So the temperature gets cooled right away and they don't have to worry about rising temperature when they move from one location to another. So that uh, uh, Teledynisco Blizzard sampler is an ideal uh, sampler for that. It is very important. The reason is uh, the rise in temperature can compromise the presence of virus. So you are trying to control the temperature. So you are trying to cool down the sample as soon as uh, the samples are taken. And good thing is uh, ESCO refrigerator sampler uh, is can maintain sample temperature at a four degree centigrade uh, at even high temperature outside. It will still maintain temperature of the sample as four degree centigrade. And most of our portable sampler, who, which does not have built-in refrigeration, has a thick insulation wall. So when you pour the ice in it, the ice life is pretty long. Ice does not get melt uh, quickly. So that's why the temperature and refrigeration is very important here. We are very happy uh, that we are able to help a uh, community uh, like this. And WDS, one of the importance of the WDS, CDC has realized that. CDC is uh, providing uh, free samplers to all small utilities for this WDA, uh, WDS program. And I'm very happy to say that uh, we are the primary sampler supplier in that program. Uh, and we are also contributing to a lot of universities wherein um, universities are able to uh, protect their entire campus through their WD, uh, WDS. And I'll give you one example uh, that one university in Phoenix, uh, they went uh, after in 2020, after summer break, when students started coming in, they uh, start uh, implemented this WDS program. And one day, and they put a you know, sampler at a different locations throughout the campus. One day they detected virus present and outlet of the dorm. And they immediately implemented clinical testing for that dorm. And they were able to isolate uh, only two students out of uh, many just two students. So if this would not have been implemented, think about it that, you know, entire campus had to go into lockdown situation. A lot of activities would have suffered. Parents would have been worried about their kids and kind of thing. So we are very happy that our samplers are used in this and we are able to co uh, contribute to the community.